Hey there, greetings everyone. It is GleeCon here again with another episode of Lore of Warcraft. On our last episode, we, we wrapped up our, our makeup Warcraft Legends um, mangas that slipped through my cracks through no fault of the great compilers of lore that I used to reference. It's all on me. Um, and we saw particularly a, a, a touching story of an orc shaman who sacrificed himself and his position in his family, in his clan, to raise an orphan Draenei. An orphan that in Warlords of Draenor will take the stage and become an important person that helps you establish your alliance base. Um, there are two other. Now, I, I, I'm not sure if I skipped this intentionally or not, because these, while they technically did happen in the past, they happened in an alternate universe past. So that becomes a little bit messy, but I feel like we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. Um, so there is a, a three comic series. I believe it's just three. Uh, made by Blizzard. It's called World of Warcraft Warlords of Draenor. It's a tie-in event to that expansion, so it obviously comes out significantly later than anything we're doing. But that alternate timeline does exist in a, in a universe in a Draenor that has a past, a present, and a future. Um, this series is not chronological. We The third issue is the oldest. The second one is another one that comes later that we can also read, and the first has yet to come probably more of a tie-in with the actual Warlords of Draenor expansion. Um, but we're going to go ahead and read it. As you see on the front here, we have some cool people. We have the alternate universe school done. We have, um, I'm not sure exactly who these people are. I can't remember. It, it's not that they're not famous, but one of them is most likely, I don't know, maybe an Orgrim, maybe a Grom Hellscream, maybe a Blackhand, maybe a Duraton. We'll find out, but these are the alternate universe versions of them because we know they have done other things, and for the most part, they're either they're deceased or, or in bad shape. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, a comic series that you can download the PDF of for free on the Blizzard website, on the World of Warcraft website. So that's cool. So we can read this one in a little bit more high quality. They're not very long, um, but yeah, we'll do the we'll do two of them here in the next this episode and the next. So stay a while and listen to this one. The third one is called Blood and Thunder. I don't know what it's about. It's by Raphael Ahad, Ahad Alex Horley, and Clem Robbins. Um, people we haven't read that much about. Uh, we've got some cool people. That's I'm guessing that's Draka. There's some ogres, so that makes me think this is Duraton with his wolf helmet. And we know Duraton is alive and well. Um, yeah, we have creative uh, directors here. This is Chris Metzen that we've talked a lot about. Oh, it looks like Sean Copeland is, a, is just on the lore, on the ones and twos there. I'm not sure if this Alex Afrasiabi is the, the infamous one that created all of this terrible, terrible uh, bad drama. But yeah, so let's just go ahead and, and check out what we got. Frostfire Ridge 20 years before the Iron Horde. So 20 years before our alternate universe. You always say that one Frostwolf is worth ten Thunderlords. Garad, chieftain of the Frostwolf clan. Um, I think that might be um, the father of Dur Dur Duraton, I think. Not 100% sure. Or at least, if not the father, he's the person he that succeeds him. I think he's the father. The Thunderlord clan is willing to lose ten orcs for every Gron they kill. Fenris Wolfbrother, son of Garad. I'm not willing to lose even one. If we do nothing, the other clans will call us cowards at the Kosharg festivals. And let them. There is no cowardice in protecting our own, Fenris. The Thunderlord clan. No to them, no sacrifice is too great in the pursuit of victory. Our clan is our blood, our family. And the chieftain of the Frost Wolves must value family above all. Never forget that, Fenris. Garad forbade me from hunting the Gron, but he said nothing about watching the Thunderlords. I thought that if I saw their tactics, I could improve on them and kill a Gron without losing a single orc. Nothing could have prepared me for what I saw. 
They fought with fervor and tenacity, cunning and bravery. Tonight they died, but their deeds would live on forever. Watch out, it's Kaluz! I couldn't just hide in the shadows, I had to help. But I was Fenris Wolfbrother, heir to the Frostwolf clan. Fenris couldn't be seen aiding the Thunderlords, so Fenris had to disappear. Ah, uh, so it's Fenris that we're seeing. I think that's the brother of Duraton? I don't know. I was scared out of my mind, but also exhilarated. <sighs> the Thunderlords fought beside me. They weren't too proud to accept help or to work with those outside their clan. That was something I could respect. Impressive straight work, stranger. Brave of you to be out here alone. The lone wolf has little choice. Huh. Well, he can hunt with my pack if he likes. And so I did. By day I hunted Cleft Hoof and Talbuk beside my clan. By night I hunted giants. Among my family I was obedient and tame. I was a dog. Only with the Thunderlords did I truly feel like a wolf. Now, I do think they talk about this guy in Chronicles, and this actually kind of meshes with Chronicles as well. The Grand, the Autumn Kasharg Festival. I've heard he's unstoppable. He moves like a shadow and strikes like lightning. No one knows his true name. They call him the Iron Wolf. I know. I know who he is. The Iron Wolf. I like the sound of that. He's a vain braggart. He cares nothing for honor, only for his own glory. He's a coward. You are the coward. The Iron Wolf has struck fear in the hearts of the Gron. His legacy will be one of blood and thunder. The Frost Wolf should be doing the same. Easy, pup. You're not chieftain just yet. When you are, you will know courage from cowardice. You're right, father. He was right. With Garrett chieftain, the Frost Wolves would always choose cowardice. So in front of all the other clans, I challenged him to mock Gora. In those days, refusing would have meant dishonor. Garad had to accept. I'd hunted and killed dozens of Gron, but my father dwarfed them all. I was no match for him, not one-on-one. -on -one. I'm at my strongest with my pack. A wolf always is. Crack! Rise, Fenris. I will not kill my own son, no matter what he calls himself. I left the Frostwolf clan, never to return. A mock garage, a fight to the death, to be spared at the end, is a grave insult. Garad knew my secret and knew exactly what he was doing. He had shown the clans I was not to be feared, I was not to be respected. He had forever ruined my name. Gromgar, home of the Thunderlord clan. Fenris of the Frostwolf clan was as good as dead. Fenris, but not the Iron Wolf. Twenty years later. I've been a Thunderlord ever since, and now, a part of the Iron Horde. Together, the Orc clans of Draenor can accomplish anything. Garad won't see it that way. He'll condemn the Frostwolves to death by refusing our summons. But Duraton, his newly chosen heir, might be more sensible. It's a chance I'm willing to make. Garad wouldn't kill me even when I raised my spear against him. He'd never let a single Orc die for the sake of the clan. Fan out. Prepare to strike. That's the difference between us. I know the value of sacrifice. We can do this without you. It's not easy to kill one's own blood. Garad is the blood of the Fenris wolf brother. I am the Iron Wolf. And Okay, so we're seeing this guy and how in the alternate universe, how Fenris, a.k.a. Garad, um, kind of takes this role as a frost wolf person I'm thinking or at least goes to try and do something there and so I think that's kind of setting us up for the beginning of the Horde campaign on Warlords of Draenor the alternate timeline but I, I just think it's interesting because I don't know why in this alternate timeline I guess because they never have accepted the taint so there's some differences but look he's kind of he's crying there's a tear from his eye all right so that was good art very short story just an interesting kind of little back lore to set up who Fenris is, who Garad is, and, and how that kind of went down. Um, like I said before, we have another one that will be coming to us soon um, on the next episode. But hopefully you enjoyed this one. Um, neat little just aside. And I look forward to seeing everybody next time on Lore of Warcraft.